Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Everyone, uh, I am Mayank. Welcome to the session, a demo session on GoLang. Um, I'm going to present uh, a small insight of why you should look for a GoLang as a server-side technology to work upon. So, uh, first of all, I'll start with my introduction. I am Mayank and I have a total of nine years of experience and I am being, I've been working with different UI as well as the server-side technology in my career. Uh, so, apart from all those technologies I'm working, I found this Golang as a very, you know, a very interesting technology to work on because of the ease which this particular language offers you. So, the intent of the session is to not to overload you with a lot of slides and a lot of theoretical stuff, but it is just to make you aware about how Golang work, what is the basic working of Golang, and how can I help you prepare your mind that you should go for a technology like Golang when you have multiple server-side technologies available in the market. So if you look for the server-side technology which are available, you can go for you know plenty of them. You have React, oh, sorry, you have a Java, then you have .NET, then you have Python. So Python being you know a, a very good language for machine learning. And then we have other languages as well like PHP, Ruby on Rails. And then we have something which is a totally a new technology in the market. Not uh, it has been like four to five years since since it has been into the market. So what forces us to use and work out with Golang? I'm just provide, going to provide you pretty much few slides which can help you decide whether this is a language or this is a technology you can help your project out with or will you gain something out of you know, learning this technology or not. So yeah, a few slides and towards the end of the slide what I'll do is I'll try creating few very easy programs that we can try you know, using Golang. So we'll see how syntactically Golang is so easy than any other technology. So, yep, uh, so that's the intent of the session that we are going to cover today. So I can go with, you know, formally introducing you to this Golang technology. First of all, I would say the companies uh, which is using the Golang right now is one of the prime factor wh wherein you should think of whether you should go for a Golang technology or not. So we have, you know, a market um, getting captured by Docker, Google, Medium, Uber, BBC. So these are few of the co uh, companies which are now, you know, investing into the Golang, looking into what kind of uh, functionality and what kind of scalability this Golang language provides you. So yeah, Docker, if we see, Docker is one of the very prominent technology who adopted Golang years back. So once it came to the market officially, and the reason why Docker is investing so much in Golang is the amount of multitasking and scalability which Golang provides when you're working with multiple technologies or multiple tasks. So we'll see that in a while, how can we promote and we can have a higher scalable structure. But yeah, these are few of the market you know, companies which are looking for Golang and which are actively working on Golang technologies. <clears throat> then we can uh, you know, look into what is the market trend. Over here, the Golang lies somewhere on the ranking four, but you can see over past few years, the percentage change of the stakes that Golang contain is 1.586. So this is the amount of stake which improved or which increased during the past year itself, which says definitely Golang people are just liking the Golang languages. There's, there's a push and move of, of this particular market, of the technical market towards the Golang technology because you can't see any other language having such a good push you know, in the previous year itself. So Python being such a famous library and people using it for machine learning and all those stuff, even that got an additional market stake of 0.72%, which, you know, I mean, that officially says, you know, people are interested in learning Golang and more and more development and developers are now putting some efforts into the Golang technology. So yeah, that's about the market standard 
as the market standard goes you know people look into those technologies more jobs are generated into the market for those technologies so definitely if you are looking if you are new into if you want to get your career into technology and you want to go ahead with the current technology and the things which have to go which have to come in future golang is definitely gaining a lot of market um, let's say it's getting a lot of push from the market again uh, if we look for you know the most wanted and the most loved language now golang has you know taken up a third place wherein it its stake has gone to uh, gone up to 15% still python being the best library and most loved library because most of the machine language machine learning is still into python but the companies like ibm are now moving to machine learning using golang because again it provides you a lot of scalability and you can scale up your application using lot of multitasking so definitely these are few of the market thing which is going on in the market uh, so these are like some stats which are presented over there which says how easy it is how fun for human to work upon this technology versus the efficiency of computer to process them so you can see you know the best language and the most loved language is of course c and c plus plus because they offer you a lot of more functionalities than golang itself you can work on the native native cpus you can work upon a lot of graphical processing but yeah golang has gone ahead of many of the technologies that we have and we'll see in just a while how easy it is to write some golang programs so the syntactically golang is very easy it's a functional programming and i can show you some features of this functional programming further again you know a beautiful straightforward code in conjunction to the efficiency and the concurrency it occurs golang is definitely leading its way much ahead than any other technology so golang and erlang that we have they are quite you know similar they have different syntactical stuff but the technology or the background which uh, to which they belong is quite similar so even if you are learning erlang it is equivalent to uh, learning golang but golang being a google's framework is definitely getting much more um, you know push so people are looking for golang because it has got the support for google again one of the very interesting stuff that we have in golang is that it's a it's an entire language written with total of 25 keywords Uh, so just imagine a single language which comprises of only 25 keywords if i talk about java if i talk about c++ c sharp any other language you have hundreds of keywords which defines that particular language but in golang you just have these 25 keywords which defines the entire library there is no other reserved keywords in golang if you are working with uh, you know any golang program these are the only 25 which are available and yeah they can help you achieve anything that you want so again uh, you know a set of 25 keywords representing the entire golang technology can definitely um, help you visualize how easy it would be in order to you know work and program with golang so the entire server side capabilities and all those uh, you know capabilities that you require out of a server side is definitely out there with these 25 keywords talking about golang golang has an again again you know uh, if you talk about golang it's more of a compiled language since it's a compiled la language the speed and the readability and the execution speed of these language so the compiled code execute much more faster than any other languages like javascript so javascript has to run time it ha at run time it has to interpret and compile and then it executes golang definitely converts all the code into a compiled language and then converted to the native machine code these machine code run directly onto the uh, machine hence producing a result much more faster and go compiler has got a lot of inbuilt features which offers you feature like static type checking you know you can check for errors it is all 
I do not have any generic types. It's a statically typed language. You can find some compilation errors. You can easily deploy this language using the Go compilers and the optimization is definitely the internal optimization which Go compiler provides is awesome. Internal garbage collection again you need not to worry about you know just like what you have in Java and other technology wherein you have to provide the garbage collector by yourself you have to write some code in order to garbage collect stuff so a uh, Golang provides you the internal garbage collection and definitely the scalability is one big factor that different companies are investing in Golang we'll try to write small program and over there itself we'll see what do we have in terms of scalability how easy it is just a single syntax which makes you which makes your program scale to a multiple let's say threads or multiple cores again uh, like one of the uh, important stuff that we want to talk about golang is golang is purely procedural language so it's a programming language which is functionally functional oriented so we it's a functional language rather than being a object oriented language so all those concepts of constructor destructors having um, inheritance talking to interfaces having a lot of generics and all those stuff are not there in golang which makes it comparatively easier to understand and work with also if you are working with the programming languages with the functional languages they are less prone to error and they follow the concept of pure functions so anything that we define in golang are pure functions we'll just understand about pure functions and how golang function works in a while but yeah definitely these factors that we have a, sing a simple functional programming with no object oriented principles no generics no inheritance all this makes golang a very easy language to understand and work with again uh, if you talk about any other language like java and dot net you have those concepts of private public and they are pretty complex private to a function private to a class and all those stuff over here in golang we always have a package level uh, private and public variables so again we will see how it works in a while so yeah before we you know uh, step further explaining what is concurrency what is parallel uh, parallel processing I can now move to a very small program so whenever we start with any programming we move to how to create a hello world application in any language so what we'll try to do right now is we'll try to create a small program in Golang wherein I want to display to my user some random text called hello world. So we'll see syntactically how easy it is to have this small program up and running using a Golang language. Uh, so any question? So yep, I have an empty repository over here and what we can do is I can add few files to it. I can have some Golang files into it. So I can say, let's say hello world dot go. So I want to create a small file which is hello world dot go and over here in this particular file what I'll try to do is I'll try to write a very simple program saying hello world. Whenever you have to create some executable program, that program of yours has to go inside a package called main. So let me expand this a bit and what I'll do is I'll create a package main. So I'm not going to uh, explain the entire syntactical stuff for this particular Golang program or you know the programs that we are going to cover. But it's just that to give you a flavor of how, how you can start working with the Golang technology. In the background what I did was I just installed Golang into my local system so you can go to the Golang website and you can just have an installer up and running and downloading the Golang into your system and once you have a Golang system up and running this is some uh, you know, bit of code that we are writing into it in order to make this function a small Golang application work. Hello Aditya. Um, so we are just trying to create a small Golang function uh, to have a 
tiny bit of program up and running which says hello world. So up here in this particular program what we are going to do is we are going to create a package main that is the first executable uh, file which Golang looks into your system. He gets into this particular package and then let's say I want to import some inbuilt packages. I want to inbuild, uh, I want to import a packages which is called FMT. This package is there in order to display something on your console. So let's say if you want to give an output out of your program. So you can use this particular library which is called FMT. Okay, which is like format. This is used to have an input. It is used to format and provide some output to a random console window or let's say some HTTP response that you want to create. So we import this very small library which is an inbuilt library called FMT and what I can do over here is I can create a small function. So any Golang function that you start with it starts with a small function whose name is main. So just like you know ASP.NET or Java we have public static void main same we have it over here that we have a small function called main and over here what I can do as a simple program is fmt.println and I can have my sample function hello world up and running. So yep uh, this is a small package main containing a main function and this main function containing fmt.println which is like we have to go and we have to print into a console a string called hello world. In order to run this sample program what I need to do is I need to do go run hello world dot go. As soon as I'm running this program you can see over here right now I have a string output which is hello world. So this is the amount of ease and this is the amount of code that you have to put in in order to have a sample Go application up and running on your system. Going forward what we can do is we can try expanding this function and try to bring some concurrency into it. So we'll try to have some parallel processing and we'll see that how easy it is again to put the parallel processing into the picture. So if you're working with any other technology like Java, Python, .NET, you have to write a whole lot of code, you have to do a whole lot of thread manipulations, you have to create threads, you have to execute them, you have to close those threads, you have to do some you know, inter-process communication between them. But over here in Golang if you want to have a parallel processing that is quite easy and we'll see how can we parallelly process the system using the simple Go keywords. So let's let's get back to a, a small slide which says what's the difference between the concurrency and the parallelism. So I'll just slide. So over here uh, we can see there are two different type of programming. One is a concurrent level programming and other is parallel processing. In parallel processing what happens is we, we have multiple threads in the background or multiple cores in the background. So you're, you are running a you know, multi-core system, a pentacore, let's say octa-core system and you have eight executing cores in the background. So in that case when you are executing a, you know, a quad-core system or you know, octa-core system you have multiple cores which can process your application. So over here on the right you see an example of parallel processing wherein multiple cores are taking care of multiple requests at the same time. Whereas on the left what we can see is an example of concurrent processing which means we have one thread or a one core in the background which is executing multiple requests. It's just like while you are eating you are you know uh, let's say while you are eating you are not typing something as soon as you start typing you stop eating or let's say you are doing multiple stuff at the same time with your hand uh, you know you're working out you're pressing keyboard you are pressing some mouse but at the same time at any moment of time you are doing only one task but you are context switching between all those tasks. So that's the basic difference between doing something concurrently and parallelly. Yeah. 
So what we'll see is we'll see an example wherein we are doing some concurrent, pro concurrent processing and then we'll scale up that application in order to have some parallel processing. So we'll see the same program running into a parallel mode if we just have a small Go keyword appended to it. So concurrency is again um, like if you're working with a parallel system you just need to expand and you need to bring in more core into your systems and then the program start running on multiple cores. So yeah quickly we'll just do a small demo and we'll see what happens in the background and how can we convert a single core system into a multi-core system. So here what I can do is I can have a for loop. So let's say I want to create a function. Function says get data and this get data is like it runs a for loop and it says i is equal to zero and till the time i is smaller than 100 it's to i plus plus and then what we can do is I can just do fmt dot print ln I can print first so I can print a message let's say I'll pass a message to it this function and we'll just print this message and this function takes as a parameter so again because this particular language is um, we have golang as a functional programming so so this is a fun uh, sorry what I can do is I can now invoke this get data straight away um, Let me copy this for loop. Let's make this program simple. I'll just introduce one main function. Over here in the main function, I'll start printing out a message, which is, this is first execution. Once this, so we are now working upon a program wherein I'm defining three different loops. Each loop would iterate from I is equal to 0 to 100 so I'll create another loop from J to 100 and then another one which increments it and I'll say second and third so a very simple program which which has three execution a three loop which is running from I is equal to 0 to 100 and we are iterating it till 100 and just printing this stuff. So right now if I just try executing this function again what would happen is in the console you can see this program runs in a concurrent manner which is let's say it goes it starts with the first for loop it executes it completely for 100 times then it goes to the second one execute it then it goes to the third one. So the program is going on sequentially it is uh, so all these three four loops are executing in a sequence now somehow I want that my program should scale up and this program should start executing in a parallel mode so what I need to do is I need to introduce a new a small library which is runtime and using this runtime I'll tell my system that you have to do runtime dot go max procedure go max prox this will instruct your system to go and scale up on the maximum number of CPUs that are available okay so you are saying runtime dot go max procedure that can run in a single go to the number of CPUs that I have right now I'm working on a multi-core system so this will try to execute in a concurrent manner or a parallel manner I have to again tell my system that what all functionality has to execute parallelly so I'll just append a go keyword in, uh, in, uh, in front of this and I'll create a sample function so I'll just write function and close this over here right like this And using this go keyword basically I'm telling my system that this is this 
area or this is the uh, piece of code that has to process parallelly so I'll just add it we'll just execute this function again uh, I'll just add another function and I'm telling the system that this is the, these three part of this uh, particular code is going to execute in let's say parallel now so right now what would happen is rather than this particular program executing um, sequentially all these for for loops executing sequentially I should rather expect them to run in a parallel mode and also I need to put some sleep timing so because they are executing on a different thread I need to make my main thread wait until this execution is complete so I'll say sleep for 10 seconds Second. Okay, a very simple program. We had three loops earlier, which was executing in a um, like sequential manner. Appending a go loop, a go keyword in front of it, will now make them execute in a parallel mode. So I'll just to control C. We'll just move back. We'll run this and now I can see when we have the output. Let's evaluate the output. Some, so let's start from here. You have this is second execution rather than you know ex starting to execute from first. It goes to second then it has first in between. Then you can see some execution from the third again first and so on. So what's happening in the background is it is scaling up it is going on the multi-core system and all these three functions are then executing on the different cores which will be using some concurrent result or some parallel results. So the console.log is giving me execution out of all these three loops. And this is how and this is how easy it is to just scale your application up from a serial processing to a parallel processing. So Definitely that's a kind of flexibility and that's a kind of power that your Golang uh, module provides you. It provides you with a lot of capabilities to scale up and down your application at any moment of time. The thread manipulations that you have inside a Go language is really very fast. So the thread can um, communicate to each other and the amount of memory which is taken by each thread is just 2 KBs rather than what we have a 2 MB thread inside any Java or .NET program. So that is how that's a very small you know a uh, small session wherein I provided you with a very small code showing you how we can work out with a Golang library and how easy it is to work understand learn and get up and running with this particular technology so wherever you want to work in an environment where you want multiple things to be done at any moment of time so you want to do a lot of stuff parallelly definitely Golang can help you out even if you talk in terms of uh, machine learning these days many of the companies has taken go into the picture and then they are making multiple stuff evaluate at the same at the same moment of time executing them parallelly and extracting a lot of output out of it so yep um, I would say this was a small program and a small demo I present provided on this Golang technology so let's talk about this particular course that we are talking right now so we have this course from you know IGM Guru. What we are going to offer you in this particular case is the introduction to Golang. So you need not to, you know, you need not to be from some background wherein you have worked with these technologies, some server side technology or client side technology. Uh, even if you are new to the system, even if you are new to the programming, uh, we can help you develop and progress the entire technological stack. We'll start from very basic. You need not to know the programming basics. And even if you are very new to entire architecture and the infrastructure, we'll just start from the very scratch, introducing you to the Golang technology. What are the building blocks? So some blocks like what are variables, constant, working with functions, working with the operators, 
what are loops, what are maps. So as as we saw, you know, there are just 25 keywords. You know, all those keywords can help you accomplish a lot lot of functionality, and we can just extend this particular session in order to cover from the basic to a point wherein you can have some web servers up and running. You can have a real time application running on your system. So we'll just ha in this particular course itself, we'll just have a small dummy applications up and running, a sort of form structure wherein we'll just have something which replicates the real time scenario of you going to a, some web application looking for some products, and then you know you're trying to buy it. You you need to let's say an employee management system wherein you are trying to add employees, a CRUD operation like add, update, delete and then we'll add all this stuff into some templates and render it on a HTML page. So yeah, uh, if you're looking for this Golang course, it's, you know, you don't need to have any prerequisite. We'll start from pretty scratch and we'll cover up to a point wherein we'll create some web servers, render some web applications, have some styling, some CRUD operations up and running. And yeah, from zero to a full-fledged, web application running and deployed somewhere on the let's say some online portal AWS or in your local machines so pretty much I know if you are talking about Golang these are the basic topics or you know the topics that you need to cover in order to be up and market ready and job ready in this particular Golang technology. So we are trying to cover all those topics which are required, which are necessary. And apart from that, we can look into a lot of interview expectation and questions so that, you know, once you are done with the course, probably you can, you know, look for your career into this Golang technology itself. So in this progression, we'll be talking about a lot of real time scenarios wherein other technology won't be that helpful. We'll try to um, extract out the benefit of Golang in terms of multi-threading and uh, parallel processing. And we'll see many scenarios which we can cater and which is very difficult to cater in any other technology than Golang. And yeah, during this course, you'll just realize how easy it is to work with Golang. So we'll try our best in order to have you, you know, started from scratch to a point wherein you can just look for more opportunities and you know you can switch roles into Golang technologies. Um, so I guess um, that's it what I have for this particular you know, session. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.